Hello to my Boxing Locker family on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. As always, I am Matt Goddard, as I'm sure you know, a former professional boxer, now boxing coach. And today, in this video, I'm going to be talking about jab variations and why varying your jab is so important, so effective, and so fundamental in winning fights. Now, everybody always says that the right hand will take you around the block, but a good jab can take you around the world. That's great. But a good jab is not a singular jab, okay? So if I'm in my boxing position, I always jab here, and I always jab here. Now that's a nice jab, okay? If I do say so myself, that's a nice jab. From a basic stance, my head can move from there. I can step in and throw the jab. I can go forward, I can jab on the back foot. Lovely jab. The problem with that jab is that it's singular, okay? So it only has one function. It's just from there. Whether I'm going forward, back, round, it's always exactly the same, okay? What happens with something when it's exactly the same is that it becomes predictable. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna land that jab, but what that means is the minute I land that jab, my opponent knows where it's gonna go, what's gonna happen next. They know the timing of that jab, and they know the functions of that jab, okay? What I need to do is vary that up. How do I vary that up? Now I can either vary the punch itself, so I start reaching out and touching, and then dropping down, dropping the jab down, or little feints high and low, or I can vary the punch itself. I can change the guard, come into a high guard position and throw the jab from down low, throw it down there, then I'm back up here, bop, nice and long. Then I reach up and touch, then I frame, hold it out there. All of these things um, give you a way of controlling the opponent, of controlling distance, of space, time, of setting things up, of defending. If you're singular in your jab, if you only have a singular function, that's not to say a singular technique, but a singular function, then it becomes easy to predict, to break down, to beat. I say easy, what I mean is uh, difficult uh, for, sorry, easy for you to get uh, timed over the course of a long fight. Now, three rounds is probably a bit different, okay? If you're in an amateur fight or if you're in a, a, a white collar bout or, um, uh, or a beginner pro, then perhaps that jab will have lots of effect, keep buzzing in there, but, but they won't have the, um, the time, they won't have the space to figure that out. You start looking at 12 round fights, you start looking at 10 round fights, all of a sudden that jab becomes a bit predictable. Four, five, six, seven, eight rounds in, that jab gets timed, ping, you get picked over the top, whoa, that's wobbled you. Then all of a sudden, you're hesitant to throw the jab in the same way, so it starts slowing down, so you start getting a bit uh, withdrawn, a bit overcautious, and then all of a sudden the whole setup, the whole uh, momentum of the fight changes, okay? If I can use my jab to touch them, to faint with it, to drop low to the body, to lift it high, if I can occupy the guard, I can flick it out, I can drive in a power jab, jab on the back foot, tap, 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 keep touching. If you can double it, triple it, if you can move laterally with it, if you can offer that jab in as many different looks, as many different variations as possible, then anybody that's there in front of you is gonna find it impossible to predict, okay? Now, that doesn't mean if you're, having, uh, if you're having success with a specific type of jab, you shouldn't keep using it. What it means is the success you're having will be magnified by the fact that you keep distracting them with something else. So if I land that jab, bam, and they go, whoa, their head goes back, and then I go, little faint, little faint, and then they're, they're reacting already. I've got them panicking, then I drop, bam, drop into the body. Then I back out and I'm looking to move again, then boom, there's that jab that landed in the first place, okay? More success. Occupy the guard, keep them low, keep them high, leaning back, trying to slip. See how they react. The more varied your jab is, the harder it is for your opponent to set any sort of rhythm or pace. Remember, control is king, okay? If you are in control of the fight, losing the fight is down to you. If you lose when you're in control, it's your fault because you've sacrificed that control. You cannot lose a fight you're in control of until you sacrifice that control. How do we maintain control? Good jab, good footwork, variation, landing shots and countering whenever they attack, breaking their mentality, okay? What does that come from? Again, a good jab and using the feet with it. I touch there, little feint, little footwork, bam, dive in, back out, use the feet, I'm stepping around, change it, little look there, see that little height shift? Then boom, touch it out there, touch it out there, see how they look, whoa, hold them off as they step in, lift the hand high, bam, drop it down, bam, drop it down, back in here from the chin, boom, there it is. See how many varieties I managed to mix into a 20 second bit of shadow boxing, okay? Remember, good technique should never be sacrificed. So you see my, my non-punching hand is always in the correct position. I'm either in front or at the back. 
keeping everything coming back to the correct position, making sure I'm still twitchy, ready to react. What's really good as well is, uh, it's quite simple to practice this as you just saw. All you've got to think about is imagining an opponent in front of you and utilizing that opponent to change the guard. So my opponent's coming in with, a, with high hands, they're trying to apply pressure. So I'm gonna get my hand high, drop it low, drop it low. As they come in, I'm gonna pivot away, use my footwork. They come in, I'll drive that shot in, drop down to the body. Now they're thinking, is he gonna come up? Is he gonna go down? A little drop with a feint, and then I can come over the top through a combination, step back out, re-establish the jab. Get into that half guard now and start walking at them as they come in, jab. As they come in, boom, boom, turn out. It, it, it's fun to use a good jab. It's fun to use a good jab. The jab is the most varied and um, multi-purpose punch in all of boxing. That's why a good jab can get you around the world. Now, right hand's only taking you around the block, okay? So, full circle, it brings it back to that. Around the world, also a full circle, funnily enough. Um, anyway, so there we have it, guys. Why jab variations and varying your jab is so important and why it can make such a big difference um, at all levels of the game and more importantly at the very top level of the game you watch the best names in boxing and see how varied their jabs are Canelo Mayweather with the most high quality varied jab game in the world Terence, Terence Crawford Alexander Usyk touching jabbing coming over with it coming down with it fainting with it all the time changing hand position Usyk's a great example so there we have it guys that's the jab um, my favourite subject to talk about, as you can probably tell, I always get excited. I like doing the demos. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe. I don't know where that is. I imagine it's about here somewhere. Subscribe and uh, check out the rest of my content. Have a wicked day, guys. All the best.